if the 30 days after surgery were considered a disease, it would be the third leading cause of death in the United States. We lose a lot of patients after surgery. Perioperative risk is a major concern for patients and their families. But what's little understood is that mortality after surgery is often higher than it is intraoperatively. To talk about why that's the case and to think about what anesthesiologists can look out for, I'm here with Professor Daniel Sesler. When do people first get into trouble after an operation and why are those moments missed? It's an interesting question. One would think that if grandma comes in for major surgery and survives and gets to the recovery room alive, that the most dangerous part of her experience is over. It's absolutely untrue. Her risk of dying in the 30 days after surgery is a thousand times higher than her risk of dying during surgery. If the 30 days after surgery were considered a disease, it would be the third leading cause of death in the United States. So people don't die during surgery, they die after surgery. And the major preventable cause of death is myocardial injury. Why are these risks missed? Myocardial injury is typically clinically silent. More than 90% of patients have no symptoms whatsoever. And you might think, okay, they don't have any symptoms, so it's not so serious as the ones who have symptoms, but that's not true. The ones without symptoms and the ones with symptoms die at very nearly the same rate. So the only way to detect it is with a blood test, and you have to monitor it in high-risk or moderate-risk patients, whether or not they have symptoms, because most patients don't have symptoms. What can we do to manage all of these risks better? The major thing that we can do to modify risk is probably to avoid hypotension during anesthesia. Hypotension is not the strongest risk factor. Baseline risk is a much more important factor. So people don't get heart attacks after surgery who are perfectly healthy beforehand. The people who get heart attacks after surgery are people who already had cardiovascular disease. But in those patients, having low blood pressure during surgery makes it worse. So, and that's a modifiable factor as opposed to baseline risk. The distinction's important because if somebody has cardiovascular disease, they've had a heart attack, they may have had atrial arrhythmias, they might have diabetes or hypertension, all, all these things which are well-known risk factors, you can't change those. They're there, they're serious, but you can't make it go away for an operation. But one thing you can do is prevent them from becoming hypotensive during surgery. How could we implement those systems in practice to manage these risks? During surgery, it's a matter of watching the blood pressure, which anesthesiologists, of course, normally do, but also responding fairly aggressively. In the past, people tolerated relatively low blood pressures, which was perfectly reasonable given our state of knowledge at the time. But now we know better. Now we know that low blood pressure, and it doesn't have to be too terribly low, is associated with myocardial injury and with death. Thank you so much for joining me, Professor Sesler. Okay, thank you much. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from Euroanesthesia 2019, the European Anesthesiology Congress. For more videos from the Congress, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.